Are y'all having a good time? <laughs> all right. Thank goodness. I'm glad y'all came. Thank you for coming to Laugh Horse. I'm having a great time. I'm your host. I probably didn't say this earlier. I'm A.D. Garrett, just in case y'all didn't know. I'm such, I'm such a bad host. I'm sorry. I apologize. Can you turn this camera around at this young lady over here? I got to ask her a quick question. I just, I just want to get her reaction. The lady with the black tank top on. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Are those, are those breasts real? Of course. Real? <laughs> those are all real 100% natural? Damn! Do that again, please. Thank you. <laughs> Damn! Damn, all right, y'all come back to me. That's OK. I was, I was distracted for a second. I'm sorry. And now for this guy. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for showing off your breasts. <laughs> I appreciate that. You can, she's going to be ne headlining my next show. <laughs> <laughs> Jen is all like, <laughs> didn't ask me about my breasts. <laughs> you have lovely breasts too, Jen. Thank you. Just not, they're just not industrial size. Like, like, <laughs> so, well, well, not industrial. <laughs> like Sam's like, Club size. That was a Sam's, baby. <laughs> that was a Sam's Club bo bosoms over there, baby. That was Sam's Club. It's thingies. too easy to say BJ's. That's well, you know, way too easy. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> I have with me a very funny young comedian. I've checked him out on YouTube, and probably uh, he's probably can be seen on, on roulette and showing off his whatever. But um, welcome to the stage. I have a very funny young comedian here, Patrick McCarthy. I like these guys. They're cops. I barely have to say anything. Patrick McCarthy is a 23-year-old uh, young comedian. He's young and shameless. He's just a shameless young man. Uh, Patrick has performed at many of the top comedy clubs up and down the East Coast, and he brings his smile and his energy to, to every performance. I do appreciate that. Look at that. Look at <laughs> his mother His mother must be proud, proud of that. Oh, uh, too proud. proud <laughs> Patrick, you, you say in your profile that you're moving to L.A. Tell us about I'm going to start off with that, because L.A. sounds exciting. I've, I've been trying to move to L.A. since high school. Really? Uh, <laughs> like, I've, I got into a school out there, and my dad said, no chance, 40000 a year, you can go to Virginia Tech. And... Uh, I mean, I ended up not regretting it, but I was I was like, no, I'm screwed. I'm dropping out of high school, and uh, I'm going to go move out there. And then all through college, I'm like, oh, I'm dropping out of college, and I'm going to move out to L.A. And then I graduated, and I'm like, okay, I'm moving home back with Dad. And <laughs> <laughs> I think you graduated just in time for the, comedy to fall, the, the economy to fall to the freaking crapper. But that's cool. So is it is it is it just because you want to go out to L.A., or are you going to try to make it in movies and such out there? Film, TV, comedy, all of it. And uh, I'm literally driving myself out there. Really? You need to have a car out there, and I just got one in 2010. Like, I'm financing it right now. And so it's like, screw it. I'll just drive out there. And I'm literally driving, like, 2,600 miles over a four-day course to get out there. Well, that's cool. That's cool. What did you major in, in uh, at Virginia Tech? English. <laughs> oh, that's going to come in handy. <laughs> That's going to come in handy. You should have ancient Spanish. But anyway, let's see. <laughs> uh, Does your family support what you do as far as comedy is concerned? Um, the, the funny thing is, is it's the tale of two cities. Like, my mom supports everything I do, even if I'm not good at it. You know, your mom sounds nice. I love my mom, but she just has, doesn't have a realistic grasp of what I am good at. She's like, you can sing, too. I'm like, no, I can't. Uh, <laughs> but telling people that. But my, my dad my is. My baby can sing. <laughs> my baby can sing. It's like I played tambourine oh, in choir. I didn't... <laughs> so when did my mom become Eddie Murphy? <laughs> my baby Turkey can Lee. sing. Oh, my God. She's fabulous. My baby can sing. I love him. Hey, I'm from the South. My ba I, I'm not gonna go for everything. Come on, give me a minute here. Anyway, so my dad, my dad is the other end of the spectrum. Like when I when I told him I was gonna do comedy, he wasn't upset because I wasn't gonna take the safe route. He was just upset because he's like, Patrick, you're not funny. This isn't a good choice See, for you at mom's all. An optimist of your dad's. It's, it's like oh, my dad's been predicting the end of the world forever. Like every day, he's like, I told you it's coming. So back in what was it? What was it? Um, what yeah, was it? Y2K. That, no, no, it. the one that the end of the world thing that was it like March. Oh. May 21st, yeah. Uh, See, Jen's on that. She's, yeah. She had her, her purple um, jumpsuit and Kool-Aid ready to go. I mean, for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <What's your butt? laughs> All right, oh. damn it. So let's get back to these questions. <laughs> um, you tell a lot of jokes about your job. Uh, are there anything in particular, any particular reason why you... Well, yeah, I, I work at a pharmacy, and when all the... Oh, so you give me some good shit. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> no, Fuck I... that, I'm going to... <laughs> Fuck that shit. I'm driving my car through your front window, man, for yeah. real. 
<laughs> you, you tell, me, be, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> I'm telling you. Tell me. <laughs> but that, yeah, it's just everybody who I deal with, the whole customer base, they're on drugs. So they're pretty easy to make fun of. <laughs> and you don't recognize me, man. I don't. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. They'll say, oh, you're the one who stole the Viagra, weren't you? So, <laughs> Vi Viagra. Well, you know, after the Oxycontin and maybe some Viagra and some, some meth. But anyway. Uh, uh, how, how do you describe your comedy styles? Uh, well, as you said, shameless. Uh, I mean, you just kind of have to be to be a comedian. You have to not care about talking about shitting your pants. Uh, and uh, you really, me, it's, it's observational and uh, st some storytelling. But a lot of the observations is like, you know, there's a lot of dick jokes. Mine's more poop jokes. Well, I'm running pretty close, but I just want to know what in your, I mean, I know your, fa your father is pessimistic, your mother's an optimist. Right. What are, the, what, is, what are some of the funny things that you remember from your childhood? Real quick, real quick. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, actually, I really can't answer that question. Um, Why not? Is there too many of them or just like? No, uh, it's a long answer. It's a long answer? <laughs> yeah, but uh, my childhood was fun. Like, my mom was around most of the time, so that's why I'm the shining, smiling optimist that I am. Isn't that wonderful, Pine? Isn't that <laughs> wonderful? Yeah. Hey. Anyway, when we come back, Patrick, Patrick's going to take the stage. He's going he's gonna to make his mom proud. I, I'm, so, I'm so happy for Mrs. McCarthy because she's going to see her son again. I mean, I know you've been on some of the, I've seen you on, you were at what, the, uh, were you at Gotham? Yes. Yes, I saw, him, saw a clip of you at, at Gotham on YouTube. Th was it on YouTube? There's no clip of me at Gotham on Well, you, you were too. somewhere in New York. I, like I give a fuck. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I give a fuck. Anyway, um, Patrick is going to come back, and he's going to show us exactly how funny he is. Swing that camera around and get a shot of those again. <laughs> girl, give us a dick. Give us, show me again, girl. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. Hey, <laughs> the cameraman told me, just tell some jokes, dude. Just fucking get to it right now. So, okay, fine. I work at a pharmacy. I've learned a lot about women. Uh, not useful information. Like, before I worked there, I just thought a douche was someone I didn't like. <laughs> I still don't like douches. <laughs> but now I know why. It's kind of a, been a definition update. Uh, and like tampons, yeah. Most guys don't like thinking about tampons. I don't get a choice. Like, my manager makes me memorize all the different products so I can better sell them to the customer. Like, oh, ma'am, what are you looking for? Tampax, Playtex, Kotex, Therapy, Carefree, or Always. <laughs> <laughs> now, depending on your blood flow, <laughs> do you need light, regular, or super? <laughs> My personal recommendation is Tampax Pearl. It's on sale this week for 20% off. Great deal. <laughs> ladies, I'm not singling you out, but you're the only real ladies here. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean. Wha uh, wha what is the deal with Monoset 7? For, for those of you who don't know, the rest of the room, uh, Monoset 7 is a seven-day treatment of yeast infection. Oh. <laughs> no. The reason I bring it up is there's Monoset 1. A one-day treatment of yeast infection. What woman is going, I don't want to cure my yeast infection all that fast. I got to pace myself. I'll get the 7. <laughs> I mean... If I were a woman with a yeast infection, Monistat 1 wouldn't be fast enough for me. I'd be like, where's the Monistat 1 hour? Is there a Polaroid version? Just shake it up, boom, cured. That's the one I would get. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't look like that. You know you would get it that existed. You know, like, <laughs> Monistat 1 hour, bet, I'm on it. How about I told my grandma that joke? She goes, oh, well, I always get Monistat 7. <laughs> <laughs> 1 and 3 don't work on my yeast infection. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know that you have a powerful yeast infection. That's, that's, that's what I needed in my life. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> but yeah, so I was a weird kid. I was a real weird kid. And uh, here's, here's a quick glimpse. Uh, one night when I was like in second grade, I had this crazy dream. And I went to go use the bathroom in the dream. And I'm sitting on the toilet. And I'm trying, trying to do my business. Nothing would happen. So I gave up, and I start walking, and that's when it happened. I just start shitting all over the place. <laughs> and like, you know, with like your dream, you just don't even really think about it. You're like, what am I doing? Oh no, I'm shitting all over the place. And then I woke up the next morning, I'm like, that was a crazy dream. But then I heard my mom scream. <laughs> <laughs> and I go running to the bathroom, there's shit 
all over the carpet. And I'm like, oh no, it wasn't a dream. But the first words out of my mom's mouth were, that damn dog? <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's blaming the dog. I rolled with it. I, was, I looked over the dog, I'm like, you know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog's like, what? I just ate some. I thought I was helping. <laughs> oh, don't act like your dog's never eaten shit before. So you know your dog comes up to lick you, and you're like, uh, not right now. Maybe, maybe I saw you eat that turd. Mm. But, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I love my dog. But uh, another weird story. This, tr Both of these are true. Uh, I, was in, I was in third grade, and uh, I went to go use the bathroom. And I go to pull my pants down, and there's a little black circle on the, there. And I didn't know what it was, I freaked out. So I tried like brushing it off real quick, it wouldn't brush off. So then I tried like flicking it off, it wouldn't flick off. I had to grab it and rip it off. There was a tick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a tick on my dick. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even in the fourth grade yet and already had my dick sucked. I was pretty <laughs> proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> very, very rare accomplishment, I'll tell you that. Oh, God. I'm also a second degree black belt. <laughs> Clap it up for that. <laughs> even though it really just means I was picked on a lot as a kid. I mean, that's all it pretty much means. But I, I remember like the first month that I started taking it, this was in elementary school, I ran right up to my neighborhood bully and I was like, I can kick your ass now. <laughs> and he's like, you think so? I'm like, I know so, let's do this. <laughs> and so we go into the back alley. This dude's like twice my height, takes his shirt off, starts slapping his chest like a sumo wrestler. And then you know what happened? I started teaching him karate. Like I was like, okay, so if you put me in a sleeper hold, I would stop on your foot, elbow you, and then flip you over. And he's like, well, what if I don't let go of the, the sleeper hold? I'm like, when I stop on your foot, you're going to go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and flipping you isn't going to be a problem. And he's like, well, what if when you stop on my foot, it doesn't hurt? Like, what if I'm wearing boots? And I'm like, you've obviously never taken karate before because you be barefoot. <laughs> 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 I think it was at that point that he realized that I'm about to get my ass kicked over something I learned in daycare that day. Because that is all karate is. Anybody here take karate as a kid? You did? Yeah. Why do you think we played dodgeball for the last 30 minutes? <laughs> it wasn't to learn ninja stealth moves. It was to make sure we had no energy left when we got back to the parents. Like, that was part of the agreement they had worked out with Mr. Sensei. <laughs> 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 At least that's what we called him. <laughs> but, now actually, I'm going to tell some rap jokes. Just because I feel like it. I love, I love, I love rap. I know I, I know I don't look like it. I know I'm not your typical rap fan. But um, I'm just, I really do love Lil Wayne. We have any Lil Wayne fans in here? No. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's good. I just noticed a pattern of his songs. It always seems to be rhyme, rhyme, and then like a real cheesy joke at the end. And all of his songs, I even wrote my own example. Yes, it's, it's called Lil Wayne Needs a Cough Drop. <laughs> I asked for Ricola. <coughs> she asked if I was 18 or older. 18 inches is what I told her. Ha! <laughs> 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 he actually makes jokes like that in his songs. I'm like, did this dude just say he almost has a two foot dick? <laughs> the dude ain't but 5'5. Five five. <laughs> That thing could be dangling by his ankles. <laughs> You're wrapping around him like a belt. It just doesn't seem natural. <laughs> Plus, ladies, if you brought a man home and he whipped out an 18-inch cock, would you be happy? Or would you be afraid he might puncture a lung? Because I think that's <laughs> the more likely scenario. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for having me here, guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> My name is Patrick MacArthur. Yeah.